and welcome to Global Mission Vision Fellowship. This is would be a place that you can find the, the biblical preaching, the study of the Bible, spirit-filled worship, and the strong heart and passion for mission. Amen. Uh, this is the place that you will find also the great uh, fellowship among the believer, the sharing of the meals, and it is written in the word of Lord of the Lord in the book of Acts chapter two that we are sharing the meal together, having the fellowship together, preaching the gospel together, studying the word of God together, and this is you can find in this place by the presence of God and by the blessings of God. Now, if you are nearby in Orange County, we'd like to invite you to come in person and join and worship together with us and serve together with us at 8461, 8461 Garden Grove, Bulover, Garden Grove City, California. So we'd love to see you here on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. as well as Friday at 6, at 7 p.m. every Friday, every Sunday that we are here. Now today, we will continue with our message on the book of 1 Samuel. So, are, are we glad that we are now on 1 Samuel chapter 15? <laughs> okay, yeah, it takes time for us to go through the Bible, but that is how that we learn to know more about the Word of God. Okay, so today, we are going to study a quite a very sad lesson. And the topic that I'd like to share together with you today is that the rejection of God towards Saul. Or we can say God's rejection of Saul. How many of you are very happy when someone abandons you? <laughs> is there any one of us are happy when someone rejected us? When they abandoned us? When they say no to us? There would be a hurt there will be a sad feeling. And even there are many people who go into depression because of being rejected, because of being abandoned. They are not happy and they don't have the, even the strength in order to move on. And that is how many times you and I also rejected God. Even though the topic today is that God's rejection of Saul, but let us remind ourselves that God will never abandon or leave us. That is His promises. The only issue is with us as human beings. Many times that we just reject God, we abandon God. And when we abandon God, God still gives us many opportunities to come back. But in the case of Saul, it's so sad, and we are going to see the reason why that soul is no longer or was no longer accepted by God. Let us see in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And the word of the Lord said, Samuel said, Although you were once small in your eyes, your own eyes, God reminds soul, today you have become king. It's not because of your ability. It's not because of your wisdom. It's not because you deserve it. It's not because you are handsome or because you are greater than anyone else. But remember, once upon a time, you know and you knew very well that you were very small. You are incapable. You are not able to become a leader. But now you have become the head of the tribes of Israel. Today you have become a king. Why do you forget me? In other words, and all of us have to be very careful. You know that it would be very easy for us to trust in the Lord, to cry out to the Lord, to hold up on the promises of, of the Lord when you and I are struggling, when you and I are in the hardship. But when we have plenty of money, when we have nice car, when we have first class ticket to go anywhere that we want, when we have a lot of blessing, abundant blessing, at that time, it would be difficult for you and I to continue to trust God. It doesn't mean we cannot, but we have to make a choice in those moments of life. And here, we see 
that God through Samuel begin to spoke to him. He and he sent you on a mission, saying, "Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out." This is the mission that God has given to Samuel. And in the same way, you and I also have the mission. The question is, have we accomplished that mission? Have we finished that mission? But in the case of Saul, we know that he has not accomplished the mission. But then what happened? We are going to talk about that later. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? And this is what Saul said. But I did obey the Lord, he said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agat, their king. His answer seemed very reasonable. But why? God said, so you have disobeyed me. The soldier took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. You know that Saul is a very, very perfect hypocrite. You see that? We have learned earlier that he pretends to be very holy, spiritual. He pretends to seek the Lord, but in fact, he didn't. And in order to cover up his sins, he begins to say something very nice. And if we don't pay attention, you and I maybe just say, Oh, yeah, so you are right. But actually, it's not. He said, The best of what we have to devote to God. The best. How many of you will say amen to that? Yes, we say amen to that. But something that God is hate, hating, something that God considers as abomination, that is not the best for God. It's the worst. And we are going to see that the sacrifice that Saul thought it was the best for God, actually it was the abomination before God. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. God is very clear. He needs our obedience, not just the faking offering and the sacrifices. Okay? And here we are going to see God continue to smoke to speak through Samuel. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has rejected you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, I violate the Lord's command and your instruction. I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. Now, the tale is come out. The truth is coming out. The reason why he didn't destroy the enemy and all of the cattle because he was afraid of the people and he was also, he was very greedy. He saw those things are best, are nice and he cannot take it but he cannot overcome himself but to, just to take all of those things. Now I beg you, forgive my sin. Do you think that Saul really repent? We are going to see about that one. Okay? And come back to me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. Now today, let we, are, we are going to draw and you are going to go back and read the whole chapter so that you can have a better understanding of what we are going to talk today. And I'm going to go very quick, some of the major reason why God rejected Saul. And we're going to go into some of the major points. The first thing in verse number 18 is that Saul has not accomplished the mission God commanded him to do. But he began to do something else. In verse 19, Saul disobeyed God. And this is very clear as well. In verse number 19 also, so Saul did evil before the Lord. In verse number 20, Saul lied to God. In verse number 21, 
Saul insisted what he did was right, even it was against God's command. You see that it's very serious sins that Saul committed before the Lord. Verse number 22, Saul did not understand God's heart. A servant of God cannot understand the heart of God. Can you just imagine? If your husband don't understand your heart, how <laughs> sad it was, right? Or if my wife could not understand what is in my heart, I feel very upset or even disappointed. How much more for Saul, the one God anointed him to become the greatest person in the country of Israel in those days. Verse number 23. Saul rebels against God. First, Saul rejected God's word. In number, verse number 24, Saul was afraid of men than God. Verse number 25, Saul sought men and not God. 30, Saul wanted to satisfy his ego. And you can see that in verse number 12, that he set up a monument for his name. When it was God who bring the deliverance, not Saul, Read carefully in verse, in chapter 14 and 15. It was God who sent the panics and to scatter the Philistine away so that the Israelite can attack them and have the victory when it is impossible. When it was impossible for the Israelite to defeat the, the Philistine. And in verse number 35, Saul did not really repent. Okay? Now, those are the main, the many main reasons why. Let us begin to go into more detail of some of the things that we, the reason that we just mentioned. First of all, the missions unfinished. God commands Saul, and God said, "Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites." And wage war against them until you have wiped them out. But you see that something just happened, so have not accomplished because they saw so many good things from their enemies. You see, it's just like the God who said that you're going to destroy that house because it's full of idolatry. When we come and we just destroy the house, yes, but halfway we saw that gold just falling down from some of the cabinet, some of the water, and God said, you have to destroy the house totally, but we are so busy, and we just look for the gold, look for the diamond, look for the best thing, and exactly this happened. Instead of destroying the enemies, they stop, and they begin to look for the good things. He thought that he completes the mission by defeating the enemies. But God didn't say, so you defeated them. God said, you destroyed them. Yes, he defeated all the Amalekites. But he didn't destroy them as the Lord commanded. And then he wanted to carry out his own, his own mission here. And as I said, he saw all the spoil, all the, all the cattle, all the rope, all of the things the furniture are nice in their city, in their camp, and they will just be so busy to be occupied by the material things. And he made use of God's mission for his own purposes. How about us today? Is there any time that God already <coughs> sent us to go for the mission, to carry out something? And when we do halfway, and then we will see that the temptation of the world, the beauty of the city, the wealth that God has brought to us, and we want, just want to enjoy our life instead of carry out the mission that God has given. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Many of us, most of us are very familiar, and we even recite those scriptures. The Bible said that Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Have we utilized all of those authority and power that God has given to us? Are we just because of that authority and the power that God has given to us, we become so powerful and after that, we just enjoy our life. And God is second and the kingdom of God is third. 
But wealth, material things have become first in our life. Jesus said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I, will, I am with you always to the very end of the age. The goal mission has not accomplished yet. God said that go to all of ethnic ethnicity, all of the minority, to preach the gospel. Maybe some of you are just like me. Travel for 30 countries, and after that, we said, Lord, I'm tired. I don't want to go anymore, right? Maybe God also sending some of you to a certain villages, to a certain town and city here in the United States or even in California. And we go from home to home, and after one year or two years, we said that, Lord, there's no fruit, and I don't want to go anymore, and we just give it up. And that is the thing that very often is happening into our life. The gospel still needs to be preached to the nation. The disciple making mission, or the mission for making disciple, is still in great demand today. But why do we stop? The baptizing mission, mission God ordered us, commanded us to go and baptize the people, to teach the people, or with the teaching mission, are not accomplished. But why we just stop? Why we still feel so comfortable in the four walls of the church and we don't want to go out anymore? Luke chapter 4 verse 18 said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, and He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoner and recovery sight of sight for the blind, to set the oppressors free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And you can declare about this one, and you can see in this, in this point, are these mission accomplished? Not yet. To proclaim the good news, the mission to proclaim the good news, not yet finished. To proclaim freedom for the prisoner, not yet finished. For the recovery of sight, not yet finished. To set the up, oppressive free, not yet finished. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, not yet finished. But yet, we are already so occupied with our own mission today. We want to build our mansion. We want to carry out our dream and plans. We just fo follow our desire for the project and business education and many things. And in which they say are okay, are fine in the sight of the Lord. What? God wants you and I to become successful. God wants you and I to become someone in order to become a blessing to other people. But when we are so successful, do we still have God's mission occupied in our mind or not? And I just imagine in one day that I have a yacht, right? <laughs> a big yacht. And then I just enjoy in that yacht, oh, the beauty of the sea. Oh, diving, swimming, so good. And that pleasure may take me away from the mission that God has accomplished. But thank God for those who balance. God give us the pleasure, the time to enjoy those pleasure, not the evil pleasure, but the healthy one. But at the same time, God also reminds you and I to carry out, carry out His mission because the mission has not accomplished. And the second point, let us remind ourselves. So disobey God. The first point that we have seen is that Saul had not accomplished the mission yet. The second point we see is that Saul disobeyed God. And this is very sad. Even God began to speak to Saul through Samuel. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? When God spoke to Saul, did he repent? Did he just accept that he was wrong? The sad thing is that his disobedience leads him to arrogance and making many excuses. Okay, let us see. He began to say, but I did obey the Lord. He said very well, no, I didn't. I 
I did obey the Lord. Why do you tell me that I disobey the Lord? Huh? I do obey the word of the Lord. I do obey the command of, of the Lord. I do obey the mission of the Lord. But you see that many times that pride just covers us and we don't want to admit our wrongdoings. We don't want to admit our sins. Even God spoke clearly, but we will try to Oh, protected ourselves. We try to run away from that, and we don't want to pinpoint, or do, we don't want people to begin to speak directly to us. We see that King David is a different case in point. When he commissioned with his pleasure with Bathsheba and the killing of Bathsheba's husband Uriah, God sent the prophet Nathan to come and begin to speak. So David, did David just said, get upset? That's not, I didn't do that. I didn't commit a sin. No, David repents immediately. And that's why God forgave David and God still restored him and continued blessing. But for Saul, it was an opposite case. So completely just denying. And even though at last, he cannot say anything. He said, oh, I, I have committed sin against the Lord. But he never repents of his sin. That's the different thing. God gave you and I the opportunity to obey him or disobey him. In our own witnesses as human beings, we sometimes we may fail and fall. We may make a wrong decision or even the worst decision. But remember that when the word of the Lord is coming to us, when God sends someone to speak to us, we rather have a very humble attitude to bow down before the Lord and ask for the forgiveness instead of just trying to make excuses and argue with God. I didn't do it. Or try to cover up what we have done wrong today. Let us also begin to ask ourselves, have we kept well the Ten Commandments of God? Have we kept well the word of the Lord? Have we obeyed God in His word? And that's also very tough for many of us. There are certain things that we could easily obey, but there are still many things that we're still struggling. But remind ourselves that when you are humble before the Lord, you are humiliated, uh, you are humble before the Lord, when it just surrender our life before the Lord, the Holy Spirit will give us the power so that we can follow Him and obey something that is seemed impossible at the beginning. Some of the people, like Brother Mike, he loved the Lord, as you can see. But then, when we begin to talk about that, you need to pray so that you will not smoke anymore. And that is the struggle that he has, right? It's just like many of us, every one of us have different struggles. Some of us may be having the bad habit of swearing or smearing or saying bad words. And God may be speaking to you that you have to change that. Or maybe some of us are have, very, have a hot temper, easily got upset and, and, and just smash them. And maybe God is speaking through someone, even through our children, to remind us. That we need to change, but we keep upset. We say upset and we make excuses because of this one and because of that one, because of the situation that make me upset, because of your mother <laughs> that make me upset. Instead of putting the plans on someone else or trying to make excuses, just like so, we rather just obey God and begin to do something else. Maybe some of us are still struggling and God is speaking to us. Don't go to the casino. And it just last week I still I also have that temptation, right? Of course I don't play. <laughs> I know very well. But some of the friends, when I took my cousin there and they just want us to go inside, they said just take a look. But you know that when you just take a look, there will be a next step to go into that. But I thank God. I have a wonderful wife. One time, my family just passed by Las Vegas and I just gave a suggestion. I said, why don't we just enter into casino, take a picture so that our children will know. And you know what did my wife say? No. No. 
Why do you take your children to a sinful place like this? That's what my wife said. I could argue, I said, nonsense, right? I could argue with my wife, nonsense, why do you say like that? But that is how God is speaking to us, and we have to be careful with our children as well. And I thank God for my wife. And in the same way that I never walked into that one. But last time, you know that when I cannot find the way out, and then that was the shortcut to go, because from there we can just see uh, the, the shopping center over there. And then I just walk through, and I was, and I worry with my cousin who is also a pastor. I also worry that someone just took a picture and then post on the Facebook and said, Pastor Joshua went to casino and played casino, right? <laughs> you, you see that the devils, the enemies could use many, many reasons in order to accuse us. And we have to be very careful. Go to church or go to ungodly places. We have to obey God to go to prayer house or go to play focus to forgive or we are going to continue to keep hatred. We are going to love or hate. We are going to bless or curse that the Bible is teaching us and let us always open to the teaching of the Lord so that every day you and I will become a better person every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the third thing is that we see that why God rejected Saul? Because Saul really did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He really did evil. He lied to God. And some, some, some of you may heard about the topic that I was sharing last Friday. There was the consequence of lying to God and to the Holy Spirit. Remember the story in the book of Acts about Ananias and Sapphira. You still remember the couple? When they saw that all of the believers in the early church, they love God, they sell everything in order to give to the poor and meet the needs of the poor. Ananias and Sapphira also saw that. And out of jealousy, they said, we have to do something. They plan to do something. And they lied to the Holy Spirit. Even when Peter asked them, is it the money that you sold of your property, your house, and you give to the Lord? But they lied to the Lord. And as a result, both of them was punished to death. So, not only making an excuse and trying to refuse to accept that he was sinful against God, but he even lied to the Lord. And he even did the evil. What, the, what was the evil that Saul did? Okay? We are going to see in order to, for us to see that, we need to read in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 18. And this was the story of Achan. How many of us still remember the story of Achan? But keep, Joshua, chapter 6, verse 18 said, But keep away from the devoted things, so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. The things that the Philistines, the Amalekites have dedicated or devoted to their God, those things was abomination before the Lord. God doesn't need those things. You see that just in our common language today, that you see that in many cultures, that the people offer food to the idols. Why God hates that, those things? Because we already offer food to the idol, we already offer something to the idol, and then we give those things back to God. In a common language, we said, give God the second hand. Not only the second hand, but the worst, the thing that have been curses. Those things God hates, God curses those things. How can we are going to give those things as considered as the best? Even though it looks very nice, even though it looks very beautiful. But God does not mean that. However, that's why. Saul and his people did. They get everything, the good things that have been ed dedicated or even offered to the gods of the Gentile. And they offer to God. Otherwise, we will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. He did not only the evil to God, but he also did the evil to the Israelite or the people of Israel. 
He knew the commands of God. He knew the laws of God. That when he's going to take those things, it's just like Achan, they're going to bring the defeat. Just like when the Israelites, they defeat, they, they go to attack the ice city. Then they was defeated because Achan had committed sin. What did Achan do? Achan replied, it is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and this is what I have done when I saw in the plunder a beautiful rope from Babylonia to a hundred of shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighed in fifty shekels, coveted them and took them. He was greedy for those things. And in exactly the same way, so, and the Israelite was also greedy because they saw so many beautiful things. They saw the materialism. They saw the wealth that they are going to have if they are going to get those things for themselves. But God said, destroy all of those things. But they didn't. And that was the reason why the Israelite was defeated by the ice city. And many people died. And this is also the reason why that in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, God did not answer Saul. And if they don't repent, they are going to have another failure or another defeat by the enemies once again because they have committed sin against the Lord. How about all of us today? Have we done any acts or anything that is evil against the Lord? Let's begin to meditate on our life because those evil things could influence our family. It would bring many unhappiness into our family. It can bring many trouble into our life. And it could bring many failures into our life. It could bring the sadness into our life in which we don't even recognize it or see it. But today, if we have done anything evil, or so bring anything evil into our home, into family, into our relationship, into our church, let's also pray and repent of that. But it's sad to say, Saul did not even repent. And he just said, oh, okay, okay. So just, uh, you pray for the Lord to forgive me. <laughs> you see, that's, so, that's what he did. He talked to Samuel, you pray that the Lord will forgive me. Unlike David, David said, I have sinned, and Lord, forgive me. We have to take the responsibility for the sin that we have committed against the Lord. Psalm chapter 1 reminds us, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that the sinner take or sit in the company of the mockers. But whose delight is in the Lord of the Lord, and whose meditate on his law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which uses its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. And of course, the wicked people will not be like that. If you read on with Psalm chapter 1, what evil that we did or sin did we commit? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 7, from verse 7 begin to tell us on its own. There are a lot. You can read in the book of Romans, Paul lists a lot of sins. And usually, I also mention to you in the book of Galatians chapter 5 about the fruit of the flesh. There are so many things. But here are some of the things that the Apostle Paul also reminds us. The very fact that you have lawsuit among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wrong? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourself cheat and do wrong. Actually, Paul just say a very nice way. But then he come back and he hit that the reason why people give you the lawsuit is because you cheat, because you did wrong. Not because of other people who cheat or because of other people do wrong to you, but you are the one who do that. And you do this to your brothers and your sister. That's the worst. He said, or do you not know that the wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, drunkards nor slanderers, nor swindlers uh, will inherit the kingdom of God. This scripture we say very clear. 
if we are going to do those people, we are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, holy mind. You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And may God help you and I to remind ourselves that we are the children of God. We are the children of light. We are the prince and the princess. We are from the royal family. We have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. We have been sanctified by the blood of the, the, the Lamb. We have been transformed to be in the images of the Lord, in His, into His likeness. And let us continue to move in that direction. And do not like so as we learn today with the three lessons that you and I have learned that He has not finished His mission. Let us finish the mission that God has given to us and do it well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the second thing that He disobeyed God. And let us also remind ourselves that you and I are not going to disobey the Lord. We are not going to disobey the word of the Lord. And thirdly, so did evil, but not you and I. Amen. We are going to do righteous, righteousness. We are going to follow the path that God has led us. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much once again for your word. Lord, we, as we are going to listen to a beautiful song that God you are going to present through Brother Thomas, Lord, I need you. Father, we pray that at the song being presented and speaking to us, Lord, we need you in every moment of our life. And as we are going to trust in you, we are going to depend on you, Lord, we are not going to disobey you anymore. We are not going to commit evil or sin anymore. We are not going to lie to you anymore, but we are going to go to you and we are knowing that by your strength, by your power, we become a better person every day. Lord, we dedicate all of our brothers and sisters and may your word continue to remind us so that we can live a life that is worthy of the call. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.